Deacon John Henry Duncan Davis. Um, as you know, he made quite a, he touched just so many people's lives, didn't he? Yes. yes. And thank you so much for coming out um, and even being willing to put your own life at risk in spite of COVID. But God is going to bless, and we know that our brother is in a better place, and I'm just going to open in a word of prayer, and then we have a few more selections from the choir. <laughs> now, Lord God in heaven, we thank you so much for this time together, and though our uh, beloved uh, Deacon John Davis uh, is no longer here in bodily form, but I just thank you so much that your word promised that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so I thank you so much for salvation and those that have made a decision. And I thank you so much for John's testimony and his legacy and friends. And, and Lord, we just pray that you would just bless this day and all things. And, and Lord, we just want to give you the praise and the glory for all things that are said and done. And then Lord, that we will be ready for when we're called home that we'll be ready to stand before you as well. And I thank you now, and we just pray that you will just lift uh, hurting hearts and you'll comfort the afflicted. And, and Lord, you, you'll speak to every heart this morning. For we ask you for this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
the Old Testament reading and New Testament reading <laughs> is right here. So, um, as you can see, it's going to first be Matthew 6.33, and um, I'll read it, and then, um, well, let's just read it responsibly. I can't say read it responsibly, but just read it together, if, if you can see this, and put it out in Matthew 6.33, our New Testament reading, um, and then we'll have our Old Testament reading. But the New Testament reading, we'll all just read together. Um, Matthew 6, 33 says what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Let's pray. Now, Lord, I pray that will be our motto of life, that we will seek you first in your kingdom, and everything else will indeed fall into place. And, and Lord, I pray that we can live by it, and, and that, we know, that people know that we're kingdom people, as we conduct kingdom business. And Lord, we just thank you so much for the advancement of your kingdom. And I just pray that we'll be a light and then salt to the world, uh, that we will not hide it under a bushel, but we'll just um, let people see our good works that they may glorify our Father, which is in heaven. For we ask and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then the, um, I got a note. Uh, indirectly from um, from Pastor David's son. He, he said he wished he could have been here this morning to quote the 23rd Psalm. So I'm just going to read it. You don't have to worry about reading responsibly. If my eyes hold up, I'll read um, the 23rd Psalm as it has been used on so many hospitals, people in trouble, and in funerals, and this is probably the most well-known chapter in the Bible, isn't it? But this chapter known as the Shepherd's Song says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, Lord, I do thank you that you are our shepherd and that we can personalize you, that you are my shepherd. You're not a shepherd. You're not just a shepherd for somebody else, but you are my shepherd. And, Lord, I pray that as my shepherd that you will lead me and just help me to do the things that you have me to do. And, Lord, we just ask your continued blessing now in all things. And, and Lord, it says as we pay tribute to one of ours, and, but above all, one of yours, uh, we thank you that you just... Uh, so fit to take him, and we know that you don't ever make mistakes, that he is indeed in a better place, and, and Lord, we just want to give you the praise and glory now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> At this time, we have our quartet. We got our quartet members, and I just love hearing these guys get together. Anytime they can come and sing, and... <laughs>
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory
But anybody else want to bring some more reflections? Now, the thing to keep in mind, um, we need to be out of here on our way by 12. The military is going to meet us at the cemetery. Uh, Deacon Davis was a veteran, and, they, and the military is good about honoring veterans. And so any reflections, anybody want to, anybody else want to add something, want to say something, some good stories about how he touched you? Okay. speech or anything. Uh, John Davis was a good friend of our family since the Suggies. When him and my dad worked at the post office together and they both served at the Air Force. But he's a good man. Yes, he was. He's always there for us. We spent a lot of time in this church together when I was a teenager. Always loving. He's a great man. He's a great friend. And I consider him a member of our family. I'll never forget him. I hope you guys won't either. Ladies and gentlemen. And I just want to just say how great a man he was. And may he rest in peace. And I suppose that's all I have to say. Thank you. My name is Natasha and I first met Deke in November of 2016 after they kicked me out of jail and I was walking that road to go hitchhike into town and uh, little did I know that he was going and visiting his son and had seen me walking down that road 
And he picked me up and said, boy, I'm glad, I bet you're glad to be out of that place. And I had no idea what I was gonna do. I uh, was brought up here from Colorado and um, he gave me his number and said, if you ever wanna go to church, call me. And I did. And from that day on, I ended up mowing his lawn and helping him and cleaning his house and going to lunch with him. And I have actually a picture of him chasing me with a broom that I took. <laughs> And I said he was the slave driver, and he had, you know, he fumbles with his words, and he goes, you're one of those, uh, you know, vanilla workout monkeys. And I said, I'm telling my mom on you. <laughs> um, my mom would come out and visit, and she loved Deke as well. Um, you know, I was uh, the one that found him, and I was able to, you know, spend that time with him. And when I found out that he had COVID, you know, I wasn't wearing a mask. I was in his home cleaning and taking care of him um, before we took him to the hospital. And, um, you know, I was put in a bubble. The Lord put me there in his life, and he was my guardian angel. And, um, you know, that man saved my life. Jesus told him to pull over and pick me up. And that's one thing that he did tell me. I said, why did you ever pick me up? And he said, because God told me to. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'll never forget. And my mom is watching this this morning. She sent some flowers. And um, he was very near and dear to everybody in here. Thank you. This is a God wink moment. I've known John Davis for 40 some years, but I didn't realize it was the same one until just a few minutes ago. He used to be our mailman, and after he retired, he would come by at least once a week just to sit out in the front yard and visit with us. And he and my husband were very, very close. But I don't, and every time I saw him here, I always gave him a big hug, but I didn't know why. And here it was the same person. And I just now just realized that he didn't remember our names very well either, <laughs> but he remembered Patches and Brandy, and he, those were our little poodles, and he brought them treats every single day. So I am just in awe that this is the exact same man. So he has been a part of our lives for at least 40 years. Uh, a long time ago, I'm Rose Smith. A long time ago, I walked by this church, and there was a glow about it. And I was going to uh, Calvary Chapel, and uh, I had talked to somebody named Rosemary. My name is Rosemary. She said, you know, you might like that church. Dorothy went there. And I went, okay, I called Dorothy, and I, um, I called the pastor, and I came to church. And, um, then I talked to the pastor, and he is, and his wife, Matt, uh, who pastor Mary uh, David and I in this church and uh, I came to choir and he said you want to come to choir and I said yes and Max said we, we encourage you to come so I came so here's Deke coming in the door he's uh, digging water out of his back of his car <laughs> and he's turned to me he didn't really know me and he goes would you like some water I said yes now that's the first act of love that I saw of the, that's just the first. So I walked in with him and I was singing and I had a uh, very end of time and he looked at me and he goes, you know, you got the swing and sway, you can stay. He had that way of just saying just enough to include you. And uh, it's in 1 John chapter 3, 
five through seven, that it gives great joy to our Father that we walk in the truth, that his children walk in the truth. You can know the truth, but you have to walk in the truth. That's right, that's right. And that's what Deke did every day. I, he was faithful about Sunday school. He was faithful about being uh, a deacon in this church. He was faithful in the community. When he, he told me stories about being a postal worker and how he would go and visit them even after he was retired. But to my grandson, who is now 17, he was really quite upset, you know, that Deke wasn't feeling well, that he, he went to be with Jesus. But he called him the sheriff. He said, no, I got you. And he goes, no, no, I got you. And he said, yeah, you, you're not as strong as I am. And Deke would say, but I'm the sheriff. <laughs> I run this place. Yeah, he had that way about anybody, any generation. And the last thing is that he, I have a very special person in my life in this church, Kay Fermo, who was one of, she and I studied the Bible together outside of church. And she was uh, a person, that, she was cafeteria worker, actually the cook, at Benefice, and Deke went and visited her with her, and he would go and have coffee, and he would have something to eat, mm -hmm. and he witnessed to Kay Fermo, who was in the Catholic Church, and he sat down and showed her, these are the writings in the Bible, this is what Jesus taught, this is what the Catholic Church teaches, and he brought Kay Fermo out of the Catholic Church. And she was such a testimony in this church, teaching Bible studies, and just being a real strong, loving, kind Christian, just a follower of Christ. And he brought she and her sister Joni out of the Catholic Church, just because of his love and caring, and he knew the Bible, and he walked in the truth. So, thank you very much, and thanks just a blessing to be here. Thank you all for the laughter because uh, this is a celebration. Yes. You know, this is uh, this is not you know a funeral. It's a celebration. Deep would not want us to be crying for him. You know, the quiet is kept. Somebody should be crying for us because we're still here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know which story I want to tell about Bubba. That's what we call him, Bubba, Mr. Bubba. Um, a while back, a long time ago, uh, I used to stay with Mr. Bubba, and when I was off, he'd say, let's go get some coffee. So not knowing any better, I'd get ready and we'd go get coffee and he'd be driving and here I am thinking we're going to a coffee shop. He pulls up to his insurance agent and we go in there and have coffee. You know, <laughs> about 45 minutes. So next time he said, let's go get some coffee. I said, okay. So I tried to be slick and I decided to drive. And so I was driving down ninth, and he said, let's go in there for a minute. We pull up in the laundry mat, we'll sit there for an hour, and have coffee. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bubba loves his coffee, though. Uh, and I, I truly believe he, he's up in heaven, having coffee with God, and swapping fish stories, you know. But, uh, you know, I've known Bubba for a long time, and he's always helped people. Yeah. That was his calling. He's always helped people. And he's always spent his time talking about God. Yeah. It was very hard to have a conversation with him without talking about God. And you know, some of the lessons I learned from Bubba was life lessons. And one of them was always be ready to pray. You know, when I became a deacon in this church, you know, it was, it was a fearful step. But Bubba told me to always be ready to pray. 
because he said it was something about prayer. He said you could do it with someone or you could pray for someone. And he said you could you could pray for the most devious, sinful, whatever kind of person. And you'd be surprised how that prayer would change someone's life. So he taught me to always be able to pray at the drop of a hat. You know, and I love him for that because uh, today I truly believe in prayer and I truly believe that prayer works. And I have no fear about praying anytime or any place. And that's due to Bubba. So he'll be surely missed. And like Mike said, if you want to see him again, there's only one way to do it. And that's to be saved because it's only one way into heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. My name is Marley, Martha, Bertha. <laughs> Actually, my name is Marla, um, but that's what he called me. Um, John Davis and I could talk for hours on the phone. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've been sober 10 years, but we would talk on the phone for two hours of his stories and my stories of drinking and how we thank the Lord from taking us where we were to where we are now. Um, so he talked a lot about his mama and his mama's cooking and his mama making raccoon or, or possum or anything that you could kill. Um, we would go over to Mike's house and have dinner and he would look at Mike's basset hound, Walter, and talk about ways of cooking up Walter's ears. <laughs> <laughs> and serving it with all sorts of soul food. And then he was also talking about cooking up Mike's ducks. But he was such a blessing. Nobody knows. He didn't know how to use Facebook, as he would say to me. But he would call me constantly with anybody that had any kind of ache, pain, or disease, or somebody in need of prayer and send a text out and get it out to all the prayer warriors so we could all pray for him. He was constantly in prayer. And I did get him a plaque of, well done, my good and faithful servant, yeah. years ago, because he was, he was a good, faithful servant. Yeah. And you truly will be missed. Caitlin Taylor, some of you knew her, had come to church here years ago, and uh, Deacon Davis said he would always request that she sing uh, at his funeral, his eye was on the sparrow. And so she sent a recording, and before I bring a quick eulogy, I want to, um, I just want to see how well this is going to be received, but, you know, this is some song he had requested years ago to be sung at her funeral, and he wanted her to do it. But she's in California right now, so <laughs> let's see. She sang that song, though. Mm -hmm. That cold old sparrow? Yeah.
Hey, thank you, Kayla. I saw a green light when I called her, so, so she's watching watching the service. Oh, my um, and, and thanks once again to all of you that have contributed. I want to bring a message and um, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, I'm just going to bring one verse. And Hebrews, uh, chapter 11, and I'm going to be looking at verse number five. This is about a man named Enoch. And Hebrews 11, 5 tells us, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And let's pray. Now, Lord, I pray that in these next few minutes, as I bring your word, that uh, these will be your words. And Lord, that this will be our goal also to please you. Because there's nothing greater in life than knowing that we please you, that we can have this testimony also. I pray if anybody that's not saved, Lord, that they can come to know you in a personal way. And, and then Christians will be encouraged to know that uh, heaven has gained another, another prayer warrior. And that it's just going to be such a day of rejoicing when we all get to heaven. We thank you now and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of us are going to, some of us are going to go to the cemetery uh, in a few minutes. And a typical cemetery, when you walk through it and you look at loved ones that have gone on, you look at the headstone, and the headstone has normally two dates. The date the person was born and the date the person died. But it is separated by a dash. And that dash between the two dates, though it says nothing, but it says a lot. And the question I have for you is, what will your dash say? Amen. Someday we are going to depart this life and somebody may one day be walking by our headstone. And so the question being, what will your dash say? You know what, Deacon John Davis, we had a part to be, we had a chance to be a part of this dash. We saw it. Maybe it is not, and, and, and the dash between two dates it's not going to be in words. Uh, it won't be inscribed. And maybe even people from a hundred years from now, the Lord shall tarry for have long. When they see that dash, people a lot of times don't even know you. You're somebody that lived maybe a hundred years ago. And all they see is a dash between two dates. But we saw his dash in action, didn't we? Amen. And so though the dash may not say anything, but the dash, on the other hand, says a lot about the person. It tells all about the person's life and how he lived between those two dates, between the date he was born and the date that he died. But the dash, and the most important part of that dash, is when did he receive Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior? That stands out more than anything else. And what kind of a life did he live now that he knew the Lord? Again, we have seen this man's dash in action. Yeah. We have had the chance to live a part of this history that maybe a lot of people, um, 100, 200 years from now, the Lord shall tell you now, I believe it's going to come back, the Lord is coming back long before then. I don't know when, but, but if he shall tarry, people in the next few generations, all they will see is a dash. And so some of the things about the dash, the dash, um, some people would have to show for their dash is that they made a lot of money. They made a lot of fame. They were well known. They wrote a particular book. They belong to the Forbes list of who's who. And they made all kinds of major accomplishments. But you know, presidents and popes and poppers and we all have one thing in common and that is there is going to come a day where we come to the end of our lives. And that dash, what 
will your dash say? People will try to make a lot of money, but the first thing they find out about this dash is they can't take it with them. You can accumulate all the wealth, you can be known as the richest man around, but when you die, you cannot take it with you. You can be a celebrity and well-known, you can be on the television, a great actor, you can be a great poet, a great philosopher, even a great preacher. I have my library at home, I just, it's, it's a hobby I have. When I was in college, I didn't, I took a course on lives of great Christian when I went through Bible college. And at the time, I didn't really care that much for it, but that's been over 30 years ago now. So, but I have loved hearing about the legacy of preachers that have gone on and Christians. I, I love reading about Fanny Crosby, for example. Fanny Crosby, if you don't know, she has a lot of her songs in this hymn book. And any typical church hymn book, there would be Fanny Crosby's songs in it. Fanny Crosby, remember, was blind, but she could see things that a lot of us who have our so-called eyesight cannot see. Her dash said a lot. <laughs> she loved the Lord. Amen. But if I had a choice about my dash, you know, as Enoch, he really, it's not that really that much about him in the Bible. You read, we first read about him in the book of Genesis, that, that he uh, walked with God. And Enoch, there came a day, I like to think of it this way, that the Bible says that in Genesis chapter 5, we're talking about all the people that had died and the, the gets and all that good stuff and talking about how long they lived and everything. And the Bible gets to Enoch and says that Enoch walked with God and he was not because God took him. So I like to think of it as the analogy of Enoch, he's walking with God. And he says, as he and God are walking together, God just finally looks at him and tells him, you know, Enoch, We've come such a long ways. I'm a lot, we're a lot closer to your home than to mine. Why don't you just come on home with me? So Enoch never died, but he was raptured. He was taken. He just went home to be with God. <laughs> and if I had a choice, now even though it's not that much written about Enoch, but I would, and if I had the chance to be in the Bible, and if it was not going to be a lot, you know, Enoch, uh, he's not listed, it's not nearly as much information as David is on Moses or on David or Peter or Paul. But if God gave me a choice and he was going to put my name in the Bible about something he did, I would not even need all of verse number 5, Hebrews 11, 5. I would, I'll read the verse where it says, By faith Enoch, when he was translated, that, uh, that he should not see death, and was not but because God had translated him. Well, before he had this translation, he had this testimony. And it's only these last four words that I would love more than anything else. And this is the, these are words that I wish that my dash could say. When you see the dash between the two dates, and that is that four words, that he pleased God. Or better yet, three words, he pleased God. That is the most important thing that your dash could ever say. So it's not about how much money you made, how much fame or prestige or how well known you were. But I want my dash to be that I pleased God. Now it's one thing, it would be one thing for me to go around saying this, that I pleased God. But it means a lot more coming from God. This is what God himself had to say about Enoch. And this is what makes that dash so glorious. And the dash we saw in the life and in the legacy of Deacon Davis. I'll tell you something else about Deacon Davis. I'm gonna tell my quick story and then I promise I'm gonna close. But Deacon Davis, as you know, he had a way of calling people. He he calls you, he, 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 he you, you just never knew when you were gonna get a call from Deacon John Davis. But I noticed something about his the pattern of his calling. Every time I'm feeling down or in the dumps, I get a call from Deacon Davis. And, and so the first few times I was just startled, like, how could he know that I'm going through some hard times right now? 
He would call up and he would never even, you know, wouldn't even mention the problem. Just, just we get to talking about God. And before you know it, I started feeling a lot better. So I think that every time that I was down in the dumps and feeling discouraged, God always would whisper to Deacon Davis to give John Baker a call. <laughs> I mean, it had to be that way because every time I felt down, God would always tell Deacon Davis. And then Deacon Davis would always pick up the phone and give me a call. And before you know it, he start, you know, we start counting our blessing and naming them one by one. But God is so good and we'll soon be heading for the cemetery. And I understand, you know, with our a, a program, if I don't, don't mind, it's just such an honor to see Pastor Andre Murphy. Yeah. And I'm just going to ask if Pastor Murphy will um, close in a word of prayer. gave him to be with us, Father God. We know that you could have taken him a lot longer, Father God, a lot sooner, Father God, because his work was done a long time ago, Father God, when he accepted you, Father. But because you knew that he needed to touch many lives, Father God, you allowed him to tarry here for a little while, Father God, and we thank you that you now called him home for his rest, Lord. As we prepare to depart from this place, Father God, never from your presence and never from you. Help us to be slow to anger and quick to forgive and always ready to give an account of who you are in our lives. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And it's in your son, in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Am